oh, you know, the COVID-19 has had devastating impact, mm -hmm. particularly because the horticultural sector is mostly an export sector. Flowers don't wait, they will still blossom and they will need to be harvested when they are blossomed. Now you can't harvest, what for? Where will you take it? So there was big, masses losses. The horticultural sector, including cut flowers, fruits and vegetables, is the most flourishing industry within the agricultural sector in many African countries. Horticulture is labor intensive in that most of the jobs that we do there are manual, they are done by hand. So COVID-19 is impacting mainly on the human resource level. We've had to send some people on unpaid leave. The senior management had to take pay cuts, um, some to up to 50%, in order to try and uh, mitigate and uh, make sure that the company stays afloat. Before COVID-19, nilikuwa nimechiriwa as a general worker, but kasi nilisimamishwa. Mpite challenges mingi, mbaka nikafika mali hata nika lose hope ya kufanya kazi ingine tena kama kazi ya kuachiriwa ama kufanya mtu. Because by now, kuna hata mali nifanya kibarua na sijai lipo. So uwa inakuwa ni ngumu. Kungangana watoto vile watapata chakula. Vila watava, vila watoga. Nilikuwa nafanya kwa maua. Alafu vile korona ilikuja, tukasimamishu. Kwa saizi na kazi. Napitia changa moto ngumu. Nikuwa na watoto. Wanastahili wakule, wakunywe, sa zingine kibarua kama sijapata wanalala nja. Alafu na changamoto ya kulipa nyumba rendi. Pia hiko hapo hivyo, ninafinyika. Kama mama mzazi, nasikia tumbu ikikatika watoto wakilala nja. Wakati COVID-19 ilikuja na nikapewa unpaid leave. Niliangalia nikaona mimi ni mama niko na watoto, nyumba ni ya kulipa, hata mimi mwenyewe nataka kukula na kukunywa. Nikaenda pale stage. Kaenda nikapata mama hapo na ushanga mguka na masonda na nini na nini. Kamwambia sababu wewe sasa unausa hizi vitu. Na sina mimi niweke kwa kibanda hapa ni pikange mandasi asubuhi vile nimeendaenda nikapika chapu na nikanunua mandizi na hiyo kitu mbando imenisaidia sababu kama ni nyumba sina ndeni ya nyumba narundisha kale kasilingi 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 at the end of the day napata ngiri 3 na 500 nalipa nyumba when the covid was declared we had 1400 people on our books and when you think we were supposed to carry those workers at 60%, it meant that the first three or four hours of the working hours are all bringing people to work. And immediately they arrive, they only work for a few hours, you want to start busing them back to be home before seven o'clock. So what we have done is we have split our operations. Some operations were working through the night so that our load capacity or our lift load is going either end of our logistics channel. So as other people are going home, the bus comes back with other people who are starting work. That way we've extended our working hours and we've managed to keep our customers supplied with the vegetables and meeting our orders. Lazima tuweke distance pia kwa gari. Ndo mana tunafanya sisi usiku. Na so, sioni kama ni, ni, ni ngumu. But mimi kama lady, sichukulia kama ni mbaya. Na chukulia kama ni privilege. Kufanya kazi usiku. Ukona kitu wenye unaeza fanya. Wengi wamepoteza kazi wako kwa manye. 
I'm encouraging my women that uh, will go through this. This is just something that is passing. It's a passing cloud. And after it, after looking back, we'll say yes, we went through it and we managed. During this time of COVID, one of the things that I would just like to say for the women in the horticulture is that we are standing in solidarity with them as Femnet, but also with the different partners that we are working with. Sadly, within this vibrant and lucrative horticultural sector that continues to record incremental growth, women, who are largely the majority, remain discriminated, largely underrepresented in leadership positions at the workplace and various decision-making spaces, and poorly compensated. Why the horticultural sector? Because there are women there, women who are our constituency, women who we work together with in terms of improving their livelihoods, women who we want to have a voice in that sector, to be part of the unions, women who we want to emerge and be part of the leadership. So we work in three uh, different approaches. First one is our direct linkage with the women workers in the farm through training on women leadership. Na shukuru stawisha sana kwa sababu ya level ile imenitoa kama mumama wa washamba wa maua amenitoa kwa level ingine ambayo ilikuwa nimejidunisha. Sasa hii niko level ingine ya juu ambayo mimi mwenyewe niko na courage hakuna mali si tasimama nimeji empower kulingana na vile empowerment ya stawisha ina empower wa mama mimi ndio nifike penye nimefika nimefanywa training mingi sana sababu mimi hata kufikiria outside the box ni sababu ya sile training kitu ya kwanza ni najiamini hiyo kitu nitafanya wacha ni fail kama nime try on the second tier, we also work with the management and especially the human resource department in ensuring that their policies are also gender responsive. With our partnership with FemNet, we have taken a deliberate approach to start uplifting the women into leadership positions. And this is a very deliberate move. We are bringing in many women who are now into management positions. Actually, a whole food section now is being run by a lady, and we are happy to see her development through. She didn't start at where she is today. She started much lower, but she's growing up the radar, and we are happy to see her grow. At the international stage, uh, we also advocate for uh, Sustainable Development Goal 8, which is on decent work. And uh, this is where we advocate that um, the legislative bit of it in ensuring that the policies at the national level, international level, are also taken into consideration. Partnering with uh, Feminet, uh, there are so many positive remarks I could make because being a gender chair, I got uh, a lot of women who, who are now free to share their their, their, their ideas, their secrets, they can share, and then they're able to know their rights. They can identify the areas where they feel that they are not, they, they feel they are not comfortable. And uh, I'm getting so many women also wanting to be leaders. When we started, there was a lot of um, uncertainty uh, as working with the horticulture sector, which is basically a business sector, and as being women's rights organization, there was a lot of discord and they didn't understand where we were coming in. And we met women who had low self-esteem, who were never engaged in decision making. And through our trainings we've seen, we've had testimonials of women coming up and influencing change uh, in their spaces of work. Even during this time of COVID, we still need to push to push for those policies, for that sector to be a sector where it's upholding the rights of women, it's upholding the rights of workers. It's a sector that listens and acts in terms of making sure there's equality across the board. It's uh, not the end of the road. Uh, we'll definitely come back, and I know the markets are going to come back. And uh, by, say, close of the year, we are hopeful that uh, we'll be back to normal, if not 100%, say 80 to 90%. Uh, 
and uh, everybody will be back at work. With or without COVID-19, women are not sitting back and waiting. They have vowed to fold their sleeves, dust off and rise.